We enjoyed that class with Pastor Steve, didn't we? I think Pastor Steve was really leading us and guiding us with divine counsel regarding marriage. I walked in at the, in the class over there, and uh, that part when he said Pastor Schaller's married already. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering, okay, what's going on? Okay, so I think, did you want to give out an assignment, Pastor Steve? Like uh, everyone in here is to get married. You have two years. You know, sort it out, get it done. Actually, we were refreshed by the wisdom and the message. Wasn't it good? It was good. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. That's great. All right. Uh, did you talk about the class, or you have a few thoughts about it? Are we, I have, like other, I have a few lists of things to go over. I could do that, or if you have some question you want to ask Pastor Steve or myself on that subject. Uh, here, here is, uh, um, okay, let's start. Uh, We are rediscovering, and this is what uh, Pastor Steve shared with us, uh, biblical counseling. And there's a short list of things I want to give you regarding that. Um, we have all been exposed to different types of counsel through the years, but we have found, and in the evangelical world where we have a Bible, we have the Holy Spirit, we have a local assembly, have rediscovered, and the churches and leaders, that how important it is for, number one, God to be at the center of our lives. Um, good psychology is a result of good theology. And if I really want to know people, it's the best for me to know God, walk with God, and for God to speak to my heart as a human being. There's a very good uh, book I want to, very different kind of book about suffering called The North Face of God. And I can recommend that to you. It's another subject, but studying God, knowing God, and being prepared in life. Number two, uh, God, uh, God gives us wisdom and knowledge. Jeremiah 23. I give you pastors after my own heart. <clears throat> Third thing about biblical counseling is that sin in all of its aspects is our primary problem in human beings. Sin is primary problem in, in life. Not the only problem, but the primary one. Has anyone ever heard of an author by the name of E. Stanley Jones? Okay, very good. Here is a unique little handbook. It's called The Way by E. Stanley Jones. This one was published in 1946. And it's, it's a blend of biblical understanding and godly wisdom and counseling people. And I'm sure it's out of print. I ordered one once, uh, same author, same title, but it came to me and I looked at it, it was a totally different book. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to find this one, but, but I recommend it. You can get them used on, 
Okay, Amazon. Yeah, Amazon.com or uh, eBay. Yeah, you can get one. An old version, Eve Stanley Jones, on the way I recommend it, and I, I know you will like it. You will learn something from it. It's kind of the older, yeah, well, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, number four, biblical counseling uh, has in it the gospel. And how many enjoyed Billy Graham's message last night? Did you get to see it? We were here in our church, and we just loved the message of the gospel, the power of Christ to save a person. There were two testimonies in the video of people that were really far away in darkness and suicidal and how Christ saved them deeply. This was a deep transformation that happened in both their lives. Uh, number, I have number five here. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. People change. We believe that people change. And this is the, we, we call it theologically progressive sanctification. Isn't that exciting? People change. There is hope. That's another little list that we'll, we'll give you a little bit later on in the class, I think, if we haven't done it already. People change. Uh, this is amazing that people through Christ change. We change from glory to glory. It's an awesome part of our counseling way of thinking. Number six, uh, people have situational difficulties. We read this in the scripture, situational difficulties. And we do not deny that. Let's give some examples. Uh, temperament, personality, culture, uh, oppression, evil, people, um, bereavement, handicaps, disabilities, old age, physical illness, um, loss of a job, money, uh, Pastor Steve mentioned marriage, being married and then not being married, according to him. And <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, you're not married. You're, yeah, whoa. Are you saved? No, I'm joking. No, I, I appreciate his, uh, I do. I'm just joking. I wish he was here so he could hear me. Joking around on it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> did I mention problems, situation, difficulties with work, school, church, relationships, marriage, money? Okay. I gave you a pretty good list, didn't I? All right. Uh, genetical, physical. All right. So. Let's go to uh, the last part here. Uh, another situational difficulty, Satan, demon possession. Imagine having a child that was uh, a horrible thought, but it happened in the Gospels, All right? Uh, and then the seventh thing in our pastoral counseling or in our biblical counseling is pastoral uh, significance, pastoral church or body um, significance. Like, like the class that we heard tonight with Pastor Steve sharing about dating and about marriage, it's a portion that we learn in the body and in church life. So biblical uh, counseling 
uh, is leading people with these elements and we, we can break it down and look at every one of them and recognize that God wants to deal with us uh, this way through the body of Christ and by the church and by our Bible. Uh, list number two. We, we, in the body, we acquire and process information. Pastor Steve just gave information about marriage or dating and then marriage. We acquire and process information in discussion, in study, in prayer, in meditation on the following ca uh, categories. We learn about health, maybe not enough, about marriage, relationships, um, about our church, we learn about work. What a great, wouldn't it be awesome to hear a message about work? The whole message, A to Z, about my work, my working place, my boss, my hours, my attitude. Wouldn't that be great? Where could I go to hear a message like that? My boss will give me a mess. No, I'm joking. <laughs> it should be at the church. I'm learning about this. And then school. And then money. David Ramsey is on radio. A couple hours every day, every day of the week, he has a very popular program on money and how many believers want to know about how to handle their money. So acquiring and processing information. This is how we live. Like I was with a couple brothers last night and I just said, just think tonight we heard Billy Graham we heard two testimonies of saved people. We gather together, we talk, we joke a little bit, we love, we pray. We, we are, I, could, I could be home watching television, or I can be here, and what I have gained here, I can keep it, and I have it, and it's useful to me. So I really am a believer in the body of Christ, and meeting often, and being around wise people. Number three, in the techniques of counseling in the body, <clears throat> we have uh, five things in my list here. Asking questions. Regarding marriage or dating, your health, your mood, we'll go into that a little bit more in the next list, we ask questions to our counselee. We build relationships. Wow, this is a great point. Like, I got to admit, I am hungry for relationships with people, and yet if I don't spend the time, and we, you, you and I are not together, how do we really have those relationships? How can they really be satisfying? It's really only between you and God being together, and if I am with God together, then we have a fellowship. Uh, I was at the door here at our church shaking hands, which I enjoyed doing. And I have a window of about 20 minutes to meet about 1,000 people shaking hands. Hi, hello, how are you? How long have you been coming here? Like, are you new? And the answer no, I've been here about four years. <laughs> and I go, oh, I'm so sorry, I don't know you. And, I don't, and they, they have said this to me. They have said, that's okay, there are so many people, but I want you to know I get a lot out of your message. And God is here with us, you know, this type of fellowship. And I appreciate that. At the same time, I don't know their name, I don't know where they live, I don't know what challenges they have, and I'm interested to know those things, of course, you know. So, 
you know, help me out, get in my face, you know, say hello to me, or come and hang out with me by my car or my office, or try to get a connection because I appreciate it. And yet you have to be led by God, and I be led by God, and God can make uh, more of that happen. Number three, with the counselee, you set you can set goals. It's a technique in counseling. Um, what do we want to accomplish? We have six weeks. You take a block of time. You say, I believe that this whole thing will go away and it will take some time, but I believe that God will answer our prayer. Are you with me? What do you think? Let's together work on this problem. Uh, let's together think about what God will do. And I am a helper of your joy in 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 24. I, we also give hope, which is another subject. I mean, same subject, but a different aspect to it. I want to impart hope to the counselee. <clears throat> okay, number four, setting goals. Can we go back to that for a minute? Setting goals, do you understand that? I'd like you to read this book, and you have like two months. I want you to read it. It's a devotional book. I want you to come back. I want you to write down a journal. You know, I want you to write down a paragraph once a day. I want you to think with God regarding what it is that we're talking about. Uh, let's do this for three months. You may take six months, one year. Uh, two years, we have a goal, there is a plan here, there is an expectation, we anticipate real answers. Number four, a technique in counseling that is important is speaking the truth and investing in the counselee, Ephesians 4, 18, you are ministering truth to them. Sometimes it's hard to tell somebody the truth, isn't it? Well, let's stop there for a second. Turn to your neighbor and just say, don't go like that, do one of those. <laughs> how, about, how about one of these? Have you ever seen this? Hey. Hey. Have you ever seen this one? Yeah. Have you ever seen that before? I think in Italy they do that. You know, they're like, they're doubting you, they question, you know. Like so, okay. Uh, what do I mean? Like, like turn to your neighbor and just, is it hard to say the truth? You know, is it hard to tell people what they really need to hear? I think so. You know, we need God's help. We need to be honest and yet also loving. I want to say something about this. Can you remind me? Gospel of Mark before the class is over, okay? Before the class is over, you're to say, Pastor Schaller, Gospel of Mark, okay? So I don't forget it. Number five, using homework. Oh no, I'm 40 years old and I have to do homework? <laughs> you, you, using homework. I want, here we can go with Mark, Gospel Mark on this one. Gospel Mark, marriage problem, marriage counseling, husband and wife. Um, you want them to become Christ-centered in a devotional way, that they would, they would look for God to change their situation, that change their hearts, to open up their minds and their understanding, 
and you give them, give them an assignment to read the Gospel of Mark uh, personally, slowly, each one of them. Every day they read one chapter and they take a, a look at what God is saying in the chapter. And it's just a very simple exercise. But it, it introduces the whole issue of finding Christ in the Bible. Because, and here's our next list, let's see. We pinpoint problems. Is this number four, list number four? Okay, pinpoint the problems. A counselor, and of course, we sometimes, as friends, we are good counselors. Just happens amongst us as friends, and sometimes professionally, you're a counselor. I, I think professional counseling in the Christian world is of great importance and great value because there are a lot of people with problems. And for you, if you desire and you have it in your heart, you want to study the subject and really go in school and really, you know, master it, learn it, and so on. You could be really used of God in ministering to people and helping them. You pinpoint problems. Here's a list. When you are talking to them, giving them homework, discussing, collecting information, you want to pinpoint usually the first type of problem is emotional. You pinpoint the emotional problem. What are some emotions people have? Yes, we went over that, I think, or we mentioned it before. Anxiety, resentment, guilt, despair, fear, shame. Uh, emptiness, emptiness, loneliness. I like that part we said the other day, and a woman was here a week ago Wednesday night. I mentioned it in the message, and this woman has been here a few months now, and she said, is it true if I hear the Bible that I will eventually be hearing God? And when I hear God, I'm not lonely. And, and she, she, she said, this is what I have found. When I hear the Bible, then I, I begin to hear God. When I hear God, I'm not lonely. But she also said, when I go into the world, I don't hear God, and I'm lonely. And I, I thought that's a great principle, and I wanted to share it. I've said it a few times, but I think it makes a lot of sense. So... When we pinpoint problems with people, usually they come with sadness or they come with uh, guilt or fear, maybe confusion, and they are troubled. So you pinpoint the fact, you define the emotion, and then number, the next thing you pinpoint, it doesn't have to be in this order, but usually you pinpoint the uh, wrong, pinpoint the wrong uh, behavior. I am so angry that I threw the dinner plate across the room at my husband. I am so confused. I am so depressed, so troubled, I cannot think very well. I'm so upset, I just drove the car into the swimming pool. <laughs> that reminds me of a joke. Is it time for a joke? Yeah. Already? Okay, this uh, woman came into the house, said to her husband, there, I have a problem with the car. And he said, why? What's the problem? She said, there's water in the carburetor. He said, well, why do you say that? He said, because it's in the swimming pool.
Okay, more laughter, please, more laughter. Okay, pinpoint the behavior problem, and then you would further you are looking for is you pinpoint the thinking problem. That's a great subject right there. We'll give three, I think, three statements in a few minutes, and then pinpoint the word, words. The word problem. Word problem because of a thinking problem. And this is where really the council really has teeth. You're able to address the thinking of the person. And this is really, in our biblical understanding, what people need is to think with God, to shift and to think with God. It's, it's a great, uh, great lesson. Okay, so let's look at it. Uh, Let's put down here relationship and um, slash marriage. There's the emotions. Give me an emotion. Okay, anger, uh, frustration, anger. Okay, there's a reason, and um, there's a problem, and there is the thinking in regards to the problem. And the question is, is the thinking, is it correct? Is it biblical thinking, or perhaps we could just say, yeah, is it theologically? Here's a, here's a uh, sentence. You make me, you make me, Pastor Simon, try to control yourself. You make me so angry. No, I'm joking. Hey, did you want to comment? Okay. <laughs> All right, so the woman says, or the man says to the woman, you make me so angry. Okay. Uh, so what's wrong with this statement? Not that you're finding fault, but you're pinpointing, kind of exploring what is really happening here and how the person can be helped. You make me so angry. Yes. Very good, did you hear that? That was awesome. Very good. It seems that, that the person doesn't really have control because they are giving the power to the other person to make them angry. Like you make, it's almost like you make me so angry and behind that statement is uh, you are controlling me, uh, you are ruining my life controlling me, you are ru ru uh, ruining my life. Uh, I'm afraid you make me so angry that you have, that I don't have the control over my emotions. As you see in that statement, the counselor is like looking for how he can help this person. And one of the, one of the uh, elements here that we would, we would take note of with understanding, we'd like to, we would hear what is happening here, but you could really go to counsel and say, okay, let's look at these sentences. 
and examine them from a biblical viewpoint. Really, another person, the, another person cannot make me so angry. Uh, I have to have more to my life than just the other person provoking my reaction. Because we, we teach and understand, and I hope this doesn't sound idealistic, but here is the relationship. Okay, put some long hair on the girl there. You make me so angry, and it should be, uh, what can I, he, he has a relationship with God, and he thinks with God, loves with God, relates to God, and the person is there as a part of his life. But it isn't that that person has the right to make me so angry that it would ruin me, or destroy me, or I would hurt you. You would provoke me so I would be so angry I would throw something or hurt you because you are my wife or you are my husband. This relationship, this, this thinking has to change and this is where uh, we really help people and it is that, uh, you know, in principle they shift from the natural to the biblical, and uh, it really helps. It really is amazing because they bring faith into it, they bring God into it, and they really, uh, really relate now to the problem through God's mind. Here's another statement somebody could say. You've heard it before. By the way, Ravi Zacharias uh, has a great message. I, I'm sorry, because I just heard it in the car this morning uh, on our modern culture and, um, and how people are not, the talk show hosts on TV are talking to people based on their feelings. And what you feel is really what is driving your life and also determining what is right and wrong. Right and wrong is based on what you feel. It's amazing departure from the way we want to live. Like I cannot base my relationship on my feeling, it has to be based on so that which is higher. This is God. Who is your, here's a good phrase, who is your functional God? Functional God, small g. How do you live? Who is your God? Your feeling, your stomach. Look at Philippians 3, please. Oh, it's great to be here. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your prayers. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so excited about it. I am. I feel like singing like Kai last night. Oh, how did he do that? I don't know. What? Oh, is he here? Where, where is he? Kai. There he is. How'd you do it? Did you do one of those? What? Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Okay, okay. Philippians 3. Look at. Very good, wasn't it? Verse 19. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. So God is their belly. What does that mean, anybody? God is their emotions. God is their hormones. Your belly, your stomach. I want food. Hey, food. Hey, my, 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 what's that Italian word for food? Manja, manja. Manja, manja. Okay. By God is my belly, not good. Because if it is, you'll sell your birthright. And also, if God is your belly, like Eve saw the tree was good for fruit, right? She ate from the wrong tree. God is your belly. God is your feeling. Who is your functional God? It's not Christ. So here, Christ is... Uh, who we look for. How about this sentence? Look at, look at this sentence. I can't. Period. 
What's wrong with that statement? Huh? I can't. Pastor Simon? Thank you. So give him an A. He gets an A for the class. Pastor Simon. It is, it is I can do all things through Christ. You, when you say I can't, you probably have a lot of feeling about it. I can't. What else do you have? You might have despair. You might be depressed. You have very strong feelings when you say, I can't, right? I can't. I have a feeling I can't. I think I can't. I'm saying I can't. And read my lips, I can't. Okay, how are you going to take that person? How are you going to lead them as a biblical counselor, right? And we can't just throw a Bible verse to them, but we can give them an assignment. You said you can't. I want to challenge you on that. Are you sure? You say you can't. Really? Tell me why you can't. Let me listen to your explanation. So we are exploring people. We, they start with strong emotion. They have their behavior. They have their words. We are shifting them by their thinking and in, their, in the ministry by using different uh, techniques of guidance and counsel. And they start to think biblically, it will affect how they live and it will affect their emotions. So here you have emotions that are good that eventually come. And here you have bad emotions that are linked to lies, bad behavior, or not just lies in the sense that they are intentionally lying, but lies in the sense that the human race, they believe these things that are natural about them. I can't. Don't you understand that? I can't. So you get it? And it's like, OK. Let's, let's explore that. We're going to talk. We're going to take time. We're going to work through this. And I want you to live with God. I want you to hear from God, and I want you to receive from God. And Christ will change your life. Okay, we got two questions. Yes, sir. Gospel of Mark. Gospel of Mark. Okay. All right. Thank you. Keep it up. We have four minutes. I'm going to do it the last minute. Yes, Oliver. What's the practical application to a believer that I can do all things through Christ? And I'm asking that because the world in principle uses that to say you can be anything you want to be. It's, is that the way that a believer is to, is to apply that? Uh, no. The world, very good. There's such a thing, there's such a thing as false hope, and, and we have to be careful that we don't give, but we have to have biblical hope, but it's reality, and this is, touches on what Oliver is saying. Oliver is saying, well, what, what about the world saying I can do everything, or a believer saying I can do all things through Christ? A young kid uh, wants to be an NFL football player, quarterback. He works at it, but he doesn't have it. He doesn't have it. He does, he's not capable of being an NFL quarterback. But he may be guided and led, encouraged, and he might be counseled. You can do everything through Christ. You can do this if you really set your mind to it and your heart to it. But it takes um, a skill. And he doesn't have the skill. So face the reality. And this is where biblical counseling has a great advantage. And it is that we are not afraid of looking at reality. And if I don't have that skill, I would expect somebody to be an able counselor and help me sooner or later realize that I'm, I'm uh, not realistic. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to be an opera singer. Kai is definitely not going to be a rock star. No, I'm joking. 
you know, I, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, a writer, a NFL football player, doctor, whatever it is, it takes certain equipment and ability and skill. So what does it mean I can do all things through Christ? It means what God has for me to do, I am able to do it. If he has me to love, I am able to love. If he has called me to believe and trust him, I am able to believe and trust him. So there is a context for that promise, Philippians 4. False hope, that's a great subject. And we want to give people realistic, you know, spiritual hope. Hopelessness is terrible. Um, I've got one more sentence I wanna, I, uh, that I want to share with you. I, this person says, I've tried everything and it doesn't work. What's wrong with that sentence? Huh? Yeah, they, okay, if I tried God, the word I, okay. I've tried everything. It doesn't work. Yeah, like, wait a minute. I would, you, you would say to them, could you repeat that sentence? Let's write it down. I've tried everything. Really? Make a list. Tell me 10 things that you've tried. And then add a thousand to it that you haven't tried. Have you tried everything? How long have you lived with your problem? Two years. Have you tried three? You haven't tried three. Have you tried everything? It's not true. I've tried everything and it doesn't work. And then, and like, what do you mean it doesn't work? What, it is, what is it that you're looking for? What are you anticipating? You see, it's just an easy statement that is made by somebody frustrated. And maybe realistically, that is how they are feeling. But realistically, the thinking needs to change. And that is, I have patience. I can wait on God. Um, I want God to teach me. Maybe it takes five years. Maybe it takes 10. Um, I'm going to learn from God. I'm on the receiving end. There's a number of ways that you would address that statement. The point of this little lesson is uh, that we have to hold people accountable to their sentences, and we have to work with them, give them some assignments, work with them and be patient, impart hope to them, and see their lives really change. And um, sometimes the problems go away. Sometimes they don't. But they have hope. And that's a great thing to, to leave uh, a counseling session with. Hope. I have hope. Yes. I have hope. So I have one. See, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things that hope does. And when people get hope in their hearts, it's just very powerful. It's really awesome when we have hope. Okay. Um, that's it. The class on Mark. Okay. I mentioned that read the Gospel of Mark and look for Christ in the Gospel of Mark. It's a homework assignment uh, that you could give to a counselee. Uh, I'd like you to make up a short list of assignments that you could give to counselor to counselees using these three sentences. These assignments are not going to be graded, but it's just an exercise. Let's write down the first sentence here. Uh, you make me so angry. Would you write that down? You make me so angry. Next one. I can't. 
And then the third sentence, I've tried everything and it doesn't work. You are counseling, uh, if you're counseling people that are talking this way to you, then you are to explore what their sentences are, what they are saying, and then how would you advise them and counsel them, and what kind of homework assignment would you give them to ask them to check their sentences and to shift to a biblical way of thinking. Is that good? Just a paragraph on each one. What homework assignment? You could say, for example, a man came to me and said, I can't, I'm not doing, I cannot do this, I will not be able to make it, it's impossible, I can't. And when you say, I want to give you a homework assignment. I want you to change your thinking by reading the Gospel of Mark. That's an example. You could read the scripture. You could give other scriptures. But that one is kind of long, and it would take time and prayerfully, and God speak to you. And I want you to change that sentence. Not because I'm asking you to, but because you're going to be, you are available to God. And this is, an, uh, this is a, uh, you know, when you go out that door, I want you to get a book, a journal, and I want you to do five homework assignments from the Gospel of Mark. And I want you to write down five paragraphs, and you're saying, I can't, and I am saying to you, God will say to you, God will speak to you from the Gospel of Mark, and God will say, you can. Do you see that? That's a homework assignment. So I want you to do three. I want you to make that up, write up a paragraph. What would the homework assignment be? Maybe you have a better idea of what, what it is, what a homework assignment you give to a counselee that would see their life change. Okay? All right, you're dismissed.